So what about uh, how useful is high resolution CT scan for the diagnosis of IPF? Well, there were uh, two studies done, uh, both in chest. Uh, the first one by, was by Ganesh Raghu, uh, and he took uh, 59 patients uh, that were thought to have uh, IPF. Uh, and basically what, what he did is he ran them through uh, the usual uh, evaluation that an expert uh, would for interstitial lung disease, including uh, history, physical exam, you know, uh, pulmonary function testing, high resolution CT scan. And he found that the sensitivity of that approach uh, in diagnosing IPF was uh, 78%. The specificity was 90%. Positive predictive value and negative predictive value were 88 and 82% uh, percent, uh, respectively. Uh, so uh, uh, this sensitivity could be better, but the specificity uh, in, in this approach is pretty good. Uh, Gary Hunting Hockey did a, a similar approach um, with 91 patients, uh, and 54 of these had uh, UIP by uh, uh, surgical lung biopsy. And he uh, took, he found that uh, um, these two findings, lower lobe honeycombing and upper lobe reticular opacities, had a particularly good uh, um, correlation for the diagnosis of UIP by surgical lung biopsy. So using these two, uh, he found his sensitivity was 74 percent, specificity was 81 percent. Uh, so high resolution CT scan in conjunction with a clinical evaluation uh, is very, very useful in the diagnosis of IPF. Um, and this is the, just a repeat of, of, of what I said. Uh, Kevin Flaherty also uh, did a similar study in thorax. He had 73 patients with UIP and 23 with uh, nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis. And he uh, had two ra uh, thoracic radiologists independently review these high resolution CT scans uh, and independently decide whether they thought this was definite or pro uh, probable IPF, definite or probable NSIP, or whether these were the high res CTs were indeterminate. In the patients uh, that had a high resolution CT diagnosis of definite or probable UIP, 27 out of 27 of these, or 100%, had UIP on biopsy. This was not as good for patients uh, who had definite or probable NSIP. Only 26 out of 44 were they able to say uh, uh, they had uh, definite uh, or probable NSIP. Unfortunately, most of these were diagnosed 59% with UIP on biopsy. So this tells us that in patients who have features uh, of NSIP uh, on high resolution CT scan, those are the patients that probably should get surgical lung biopsy because a lot of these end up having UIP. Um, this is a, a, a study from Aziz and Thorax 2004. And what he did was he uh, tried to, to find how good thoracic radiologists were, uh, how often they agreed. Uh, and, and what he did was he, he took patients with uh, several different types uh, of uh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease or interstitial lung disease, showed these blinded to different thoracic radiologists, and, and came up with how, how good they, how, how often they agreed. How good were these guys at agreeing on these diagnoses? Well, for IPF, they actually were, were pretty good. The correlation coefficient was 0.63. NSIP was moderate, sarcoidosis and uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis were pretty good, and for smoking-related ILD and COP, uh, their correlations were moderate. So again, in patients who are thought to have uh, IPF by high-resolution CT scan, uh, radiologists often agree, uh, and high-res CT is very useful in coming up with these, with these diagnoses. This is a, a little algorithm that, that um, uh, is useful in the approach for the ILD patient and actually summarizes a lot of what I've just told you. Um, of course, at the top, you're starting with a patient with uh, suspected interstitial disease. You're going to do your usual workup, history, physical, chest x-ray, imaging, PFTs, and labs. Is Bronchoscopy has kind of been something that we've started to use less, especially in patients with IPF. Um, if you think that the diagnosis is unlikely to be obtained by bronchoscopy, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, if you think it's a diagnosis that you can easily make with bronchoscopy, such as a patient you think has sarcoidosis, uh, then uh, a, a bronchoscopy is a good idea. Um, if you don't think the diagnosis is likely by bronch, high-res CT should be your next uh, uh, imaging study. If, this is, if the high-res CT in history is consistent with IPF, generally you can stop. Uh, if 
it's con uh, if it's uh, diagnostic or consistent with another ILD, also you can stop. If you suspect uh, some other type of uh, interstitial uh, lung disease uh, that isn't covered by these two, again, you ask yourself, is a bronch going to make the diagnosis? If it is, then you can go ahead and do the bronch. Uh, if it's non-diagnostic or if the diagnosis is unlikely to be made by bronch, that's when you should do uh, a, a VATS surgical lung biopsy. And again, these are most likely uh, uh, things that you'll be, you'll be looking for, okay? So this is kind of an approach, and we do this every day when we, when we uh, are approached with a patient with uh, interstitial lung disease. Uh, just so we are clear of what diagnoses are, are easy to make with a bronch and what are not, Bronchoscopy can often make the diagnosis of granulomatous diseases, including sarcoidosis, tumors, diffuse alveolar damage of any cause, infection, alveolar proteinosis, and eosinophilic pneumonia. Sometimes vasculitis, amyloidosis, uh, EG, or uh, uh, pulmonary longer Hans cell histiocytosis in LAM, but very rarely to never uh, are the, is bronch useful for these, these including UIP. Usually you do a bronch and a biopsy in a UIP patient, you're going to get bronchial wall. Um, surgical lung biopsy, on the other hand, green for everything. So very useful in some of these other cases where bronchoscopy is unlikely to make the diagnosis. So these last few slides uh, are actually um, just some patients I've collected that have IPF, and I just kind of wanted to show you just some of the CT findings. Um, and chest, I think I have some chest x-rays in here as well. Uh, this is a patient, this is the actual patient whose pulmonary function test I showed you earlier. Um, this the, is a 74-year-old uh, Caucasian gentleman who came to me actually with cough uh, and actually had very mild uh, uh, changes initially, but you can see he has typical, you know, uh, subpleural reticular opacities. He actually, you can actually see how, very well here some traction bronchiectasis. I actually thought he might have Munir Kuhn too, but uh, he, he had an enlarged uh, trachea and, and main stem bronchi, but I think it's probably all traction bronchiectasis. He didn't have any outpouchings or anything. Uh, this is his uh, basilar high resolution CT scan uh, that shows uh, the honeycombing, and actually I showed you this slide earlier, uh, and the subpleural reticular opacities. Uh, this is further down in the chest, same thing. Uh, this is a chest x-ray of a patient who has uh, IPF and mostly shows, uh, it doesn't project very well, uh, but mostly shows uh, reticular and honeycomb uh, change. Um, some more CT scans. A lot of honeycombing down here at the left base. Even more as you go down toward uh, the costophrenic sulcus. So this is honeycombing, and you can kind of see, you know, if you took ever taken a wasp nest or a honeycomb from a bee's nest, this this looks a lot like it. Um, so the criteria that we use in diagnosing patients in the absence of a surgical lung biopsy. This is by the ATS. Uh, European Respiratory Society consensus statement. Um, major criteria are, of course, exclusion of other interstitial diseases, abnormal PFTs, bibasilar reticular abnormalities with minimal ground glass, and a transbronchial biopsy, or BAL, if you do it, that uh, has no features to support an alternative diagnosis. Minor criteria are age over 50, insidious onset of other, otherwise unexplained dyspnea on exertion, duration of at least three months, and bibasilar inspiratory velcro-like crackles. In order to make the diagnosis, you have to have all of the major and three of the minor criteria, almost all of the minor criteria, uh, in order to do this without surgical lung biopsy.